In Zlitin, what happened is this. They tried on Al Brega front with the biggest ever military attack in the history of this country for a century. And they failed miserably. And not just that, but the best of their fighters, hundreds of them, almost 600, were killed within five days. 200 of them is from Al-Qaeda-like organizations. Uh, like the Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah Brigade and the Isla Libyan Islamic Fighting Group and, uh, and others. Then they tried when they knew that al Brega was impossible. And we said, we said that we were very honest and transparent about al Brega. We said, basically, al Brega is hell. We will die. We will kill everyone. We will destroy al Brega. We will turn al Brega into hell. The planet might collapse because of al Brega. We said al Brega means the death of planet Earth. We were so violent in our statements. We proved it on land. We killed everyone who approached the Brega. We did not care about how many we killed of the armed rebels. Although NATO attacked from the air, NATO attacked from the sea, and the rebels attacked from three axes. But they were defeated heavily, and they would be defeated all the time. Now then, they tried on the western mountain front and they did the same plan nato's heavy bombardment i mean this is immoral this is illegal this is not mandated by the united nations and the international media and international diplomacy is not even objecting to that no one is even saying to nato you can't do that you can't provide an armed gang with cover so they can move forward and, uh, you know, open Tripoli. People so much accept it now. It happens every single day, and no one is questioning it. That's, why, that's because the world is lacking decency and lacking professionalism in the way it operates. So they did this with the Western Mountain. You saw that last week. NATO would bombard our armed forces, our volunteers. We would withdraw for a short while. The rebels would move forward. Once the bombardment stops, we move back into the same towns and we liberate them. And uh, what happened then is that the tribes of the Western Mountain, and you should write that down, the tribes of the Western Mountain, uh, were Shafana tribe and Nawahi al Arba'a, al Si'an, and Tarhuna, Warfalla, uh, many, uh, Gharian, and many others, they provided us with 10,000 volunteers. And I, I declared this in my last press conference. And this, these 10,000 armed volunteers prevented any possible advancement by the rebels. And they were defeated. So na now NATO understands that these two fronts are very difficult. Now they wanted to try on the, another front, which is Masrata Zlitan front. Because you know, Masrata is only 50 kilometers from Zlitan very uh, short distance and uh, the same crime committed again under the watching eye of the international community and the international press they advance bombardment from the sea from the sea and from air and into Zlitan. i mean we are not attacking masrata they are attacking us. The rebels are attacking us in Zlitan. And the bombardment of NATO continues. Isn't it NATO's attack supposed to protect civilians from us, the Libyan government? But we are under attack, and the rebels are advancing, and NATO is allowing that and helping them. You need to wake up to the reality of things. This was never meant to protect civilians. Anyway. Uh, so, of course, as usual, they made the same pathetic NATO-covered advance in, towards Zlitan, not into Zlitan, towards Zlitan, but they were hit back by our armed forces and by the Zlitan volunteers. Uh, maybe you, ha you have heard about their losses. They lost many, many of their fighters. We indeed acquired many of their vehicles, many of their French uh, Qatari uh, and Qatari weapons, uh, cars, uh, rifles, 
and we captured many of them. So they failed miserably. Zlitin is a free city under our full control. And I'm not talking just about the center of Zlitin. I'm talking about Zlitin as a metropolitan area. Uh, the rebels now are back into Masrata, very small groups of them. And this again proves that these people are moved by a wicked religious faith. Because very small groups of them, of 20 or 30, they move from Masrata to Zlitin to attack our army, knowing that very likely they will be killed. And indeed, they are either, either eradicated or half of them killed. That's because, I say to you again, for them, it is not death. For you and me, it is death. For them, it's glory and martyrdom. They look for it, they wish for it, they pray for it. So as Litton Front, contrary to what uh, many media organizations have been spreading, uh, is safe and secure. Tomorrow is your lucky day. You're going to go to Zlitin, those of you who would like to go. We will move around 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, you will go for sure, but let's hope that there is no heavy bombardment from NATO. We will, of course, keep you safe away from any areas that are under attack. And we will evaluate the situation as we travel. It's about uh, 150 kilometers from Tripoli. So as we go, we will evaluate the situation, make sure that you are safe, uh, get you into the city. The city is very safe itself. You can go there, talk to the uh, tribe of Zlitin. It's a very powerful major tribe of the country. It has declared its support of the leader. They came out on a mass rally a few days ago. After we, you see the center, we would like you to see the civilian areas that were bombarded, a hospital, uh, two schools, uh, many shops, houses of, of citizens, houses, farms, and you will see and meet the families of the civilian martyrs, the injured ones, and then if the situation is safe from NATO, you can move farther towards the east, the brave ones, of course, of you, will move towards the east and we will, you will see part of the, uh, of, the, of the front. If NATO is attacking, then we will keep in Zlitin and we come back. We have hundreds of these captured soldiers. The Libyan armed forces have refused so far to allow us because of legal considerations uh, and tribal considerations. You know, these people have their human rights. They are protected by law. If they do not want to appear uh, before cameras, they can't appear. We only film and investigate those who commit crimes. So not so. So on Libyan TV, you have seen criminals who have raped women or uh, mutilated the bodies of soldiers or burned down houses. This is different. This is, for us, a criminal case. And when the judge allows it, it takes a place. But fighters, this is a different matter. I will ask mm -hmm. again, uh, I keep asking actually all the time, if, the, if they say yes, if they think legally it's possible, we will do it. A BBC journalist was killed in Benghazi. I don't have information on this. When did this happen? Uh, someone working for the BBC. Well, well, I tell you something. The situation in Benghazi is very, very bad. This is not a secret. The tribe of Urfalla came en masse the day before yesterday in Beni Walid, in their center, uh, uh, about 170 kilometers south uh, east of Tripoli. And they said that 100, this is not the Libyan government, this is the tribe. They said 120 of their sons in Benghazi were killed. And they had their names, and many of their families were present in the, in the rally. And they said that they will take revenge against those who killed their sons. And these 120, if this is, if this is the case, because we don't have a way of confirming it as a government, this is a massacre against one tribe. And of course, Warfella tribe is known for its support for the leader. So to target one particular tribe, this is a crime 
and it needs to be investigated by the United Nations. Of course, we do not trust any investigation undertaken by the Council of Benghazi. They are weak. Uh, politically, they are involved in these crimes. They could not protect their own commander of the army. How could they protect ordinary citizens? If you remember, when I did my press conference, I said just that. I said they will not be able to protect the, 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 the citizens of Benghazi. And this is what, exactly, what happened exactly. Hundreds of people were killed. We believe hundreds are now arrested and in prison, badly treated. And the real keys to the prisons and the real guns are with the Islamist extremist groups. We have the short cut name, Al-Qaeda. You can call them what you want, extremists, religious groups, Islamic fighting group. But at the end, they have this wicked faith and they are following it and they are killing people because of it. We have uh, amazing capabilities that we have not felt that we needed to use. Uh, we are fighting this war as if this war would... I need you to remember this. Uh, I always advise people to go back to the previous press conferences. Uh, those who are serious, and I'm sure you are serious about doing your job, you need to go back to the history of this conflict. You need to watch the press conferences, the interviews that as a government we did, the statements. We said before, from the very beginning, we decided that this war is very, very long. For us, this war, this honorable confrontation could go on for years. We do not want it to go on for years, but from the beginning, we are preparing ourselves to fight and on the diplomatic front for years, on the military front for years, on the economic front for years. So we are, we, our, our army is still very strong. We haven't used our real uh, military power. Uh, do not believe the pathetic statements by the Italian defense minister and the French defense minister and the British one when they say, oh, we have weakened Gaddafi down to 20% of his military power. I mean, for God's sake, I mean, you know, if, if we are down to 20%, <laughs> Why, what am I doing here, giving you conferences and, uh, you know, uh, we are still very powerful in terms of military power. As a matter of fact, in the last uh, month or month and a half, uh, more people joined the army, more volunteers. Now we have tribal brigades. Every tribe now is protecting its location, its town. Uh, people have weapons. Uh, when we celebrate, you see what we do. We fire a million bullets in the air. If we were scared for our ammunitions, or we did not have enough military power, we would be keeping every single bullet and saving it. We celebrate by firing bullets. When we are angry, we fire in the air. When we are happy, we fire in the air. Uh, we haven't used our missiles. We haven't used our bombs. When the time comes, we will use our military power. Thank you very much, guys.